New on Curiosity Stream. The way we fight wars is changing. Every technological leap redraws the battle lines. How will war be waged in the decades to come? See what lies ahead in the limited series, Future Warfare. And uncover the influence of European cities on the greatest musical compositions ever written in the captivating series, Classical Destinations. It's all on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. We got our loud and local band of the week, and this week it's Primary Pulse. our loud and local band of the week primary pulse you want to find out where you can get their music check out their brand new single it's called storm this isn't the first time they've been a uh, bj makes loud local band of the week they did that a couple of years ago a couple so, of years ago hey, hey. welcome back oh, once hey. you're here you're here forever that's how it is your family and uh, don't forget all the info you can get at the bj mix page of kisw.com and if you're loving the local music you want to hear more of the family check out sunday nights here on the rock eight o'clock it's two hours of great local music with bands like primary pulse Seattle. What? Yeah. It's a big game. <laughs> big game. So I, I, it's very, very exciting because this is, you know, this is the test of your metal. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, so the Niners, not the greatest team, but we are going up against a good one and we're traveling east where we, we've actually had really good records traveling east. All right, then. Feeling yeah. good. Feeling good. Let's go Hawks, baby. Yeah, let's go yeah. Hawks. Let's do it, Rev. And let's go Steve and let's go Jerry in Lakewood. Jerry, are you there? Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Woo! Yeah. All right, Steve, get out of here. For those playing at home, Jerry will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Jerry, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Let's do it. In the nursery rhyme, the cat and the fiddle, what runs away with the spoon? 
Uh, the mouse? No. Uh, Pat. Who directed the 70s film Jaws? Spielberg. Yes. What is the second largest U.S. state in surface area? Say that again. What is the second largest U.S. state in surface area? Second largest, Texas. Yes. yes. Thomas Edison died in what decade of the 20th century? Uh, 10? No. 20? No. Uh, 30. Yes! Finish the title of the Vin Diesel film, The Chronicles of Whom? Oh, God. Say it again? Finish the title of the Vin <laughs> Diesel film, The Chronicles of Whom? Uh, Riddick. Yes! Nice! What chemical substance is abbreviated CO2? Uh, carbon dioxide. Yes! What is the capital city of Spain? Madrid? Yeah! One, Ooh. two, three, four, five, six, correct. I thought it was Barcelona. No, it's uh, not whatever you just said there. That's how you say it if you're fancy. Barcelona. Uh, Vicky? Barcelona. Okay, so yeah, look at that. Wow. I mean, I, I'm not as, I, look, I didn't do it as well as Vicky. No, they but, do the lisp in, uh, yeah, Barcelona. in Spain. Ba Barcelona. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, it is very annoying. Really? Yeah, uh, they lisp it. I kind of like it. It's kind of puss in boots. Ba Barcelona. I really go for that. As I five. like that. That well, is kind of fun. Because Antonio Banderas is the voice of puss. And exactly. And Antonio Banderas. Let me, Antonio he, Banderas. I would give that guy some. That's how sexy his voice is. Whoa. Just saying. Well, Steve uh, just walked into an awkward moment. Uh, it's not that awkward. Uh, Everybody agrees anything, that Antonio guys... Banderas has got one of the best voices out there. Oh, I don't know about that. I'd go Morgan Freeman over Antonio Banderas. Oh, for sex appeal? Oh, if we're going sex appeal, Gilbert Godfrey, duh. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I can't, I can't, I can't agree with that. I don't know what the question is before I make answers. This is what happens when I hear him. Ah, black. That's what happens. Wow. Oh, yeah. uh, well, Steve, are you ready? Go hogs. In the nursery rhyme, the cat and the fiddle, what runs away with the spoon? The diddle? No. <laughs> <laughs> The cat? No. The dog? Uh, no. Uh, Who directed the 70s film Jaws? Oh, Steven Spielberg. Yes. Yeah, nice. What is the second largest U.S. state in surface area? I'll never get this. Texas? Yes. He got that. <laughs> Thomas Edison died in what decade of the 20th century? The 1920s. No. 1930s? Yes. Nice. Finish the title of the Vin Diesel film, The Chronicles of Whom? Riddick. Yes. Riddick. What chemical substance is abbreviated CO2? Carbon dioxide. Yes. What is the capital city of Spain? Madrid. Yes. What is the meaning of the prefix geo? Geometry. No. Geology. No. Ge <laughs> no. In the what? Li the line, if you build it, he will come, is from which movie? Field of Dreams. Yes? Yes. What decade is the hit single, You Give Love a Bad Name by John 80s. Bon Jovi from? Yes. And Steve, Woo! you win. Eight to six. Oh, sorry, Jerry. Ah, uh, no worries. I wish I had yeah. one. Right. Well, Jerry, eight to six <laughs> isn't horrible. Just try again, my friend. <laughs> Keep working on it, brother. Yeah. He misheard some of them, asked for repeats, slowed them down, didn't get to all the questions. Oh, well, that sucks for him. It, it does. does yeah. It does, but not for you. Yeah, see, bad <laughs> connection is why Steve wins most of the time. Oh, is that why? That's what I'm going to say. Oh, okay, there you go. Uh, oh, wow, Jerry's doing a press conference already, and he's saying if those questions were legal, he would have easily won. <laughs> Well, again, maybe I'll, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not really? Even is this happening? Oh, Brian Williams already cut him off. <laughs> okay, <laughs> never mind. All right. Oh, let's uh, hear the comments from Anderson Cooper. Yes. Uh, what does the meaning geo, the prefix geo mean? Is it geographical? No, 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 no. It's a, it's a Latin prefix. Oh. So it doesn't mean like oh, anything totally, with that. Geo Latin. Oh. No. How do you spell it? G-E-I, G-E-O? G-E-O. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't. You know, I did not even know it was a oh. land thing. Geometro. <laughs> yes. No, uh, no, no. Something to do with the land? Close. It oh. means Earth. Oh. 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 Geo is Earth? Yes. Oh, so we're just totally barking up the wrong tree. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's BS. Uh, it's not BS. Freaking Latins. It's how done. all the words with are Latin. made. I'm done with Latin altogether. How you, get rid of it. How are you going to speak then? Uh, I'll speak with Americans. Oh, dear. Yeah. Uh, in the nursery rhyme, the cat and the fiddle, what runs away with the spoon? The plate. Yeah, the it's, plate it's or the, the dish. dish. Vicky. Yeah. The dish ran away the, with the spoon. It's the dish. I mm -hmm. watched the nursery rhyme in Spanish with my foster brother. El plato. Oh. Mm -hmm. El plato. Is yeah. it el plato? 
I don't remember now. <laughs> okay. Yes. You know what? Yes. Vicky has disqualified from this I'm trying contest. to sing it in my head, and I'm picturing okay. the weird dog. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, congratulations, Steve. You yeah. won. Yeah, good job, Steve. Plato is Spanish for plate. Wow. What? I remembered something from Spanish class? It wow. is. That is Spanish for plate. I just don't know if that's what they say in the in the nursery. Yeah, plato, well, well, plato. It's very possible because they probably don't have the word dish in Spanish. You know, I mean, we call plate. Platillo? Oh, oh, I guess you do have the word dish. Yeah. Huh. So then why wouldn't they change why would they change the nursery rhyme because to Because it got to rhyme. Oh, it's got to rhyme in Spanish. Yeah. All right. You know what? You win. <laughs> well, I mean it is well, I mean think I didn't think about it. I was like, why wouldn't they translate the word to be what exactly it means? But right. You're, you're right. It does have to rhyme in the other language. That makes a lot of sense. Boy, it's it's luckily that Plato worked. What if they didn't have a word that rhymed with di- you know that that was that meant the word dish but didn't rhyme? What would they just go? Uh, we're we're done. It's over. It is fun watching kids' cartoons and rhymes and all these things in Spanish to see how it is that they make it work because they yeah. do have to change the wording or the meaning of things. I never thought about that. It's like you know normal translation is one thing, but when you're doing poetry and you're rhyming. That's part of how we pick our words, and of course, they don't sound the same in other languages, so the whole thing's just screwed. <laughs> well, there you go, Steve. I know you're really concerned you're going to be a poet someday. So. Uh, no, I'm, someday, I already am. I'm not a Spanish poet yet. That's true. Yeah, you're working on that. El Plato, El Plato. Oh, look at this. You're, you're halfway there. <laughs> okay. One of the biggest selling bands of our generation is considering getting back together, even though most would prefer that they wouldn't. What band is it? I'll tell you at 717 on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. New on Curiosity Stream. The way we fight wars is changing. Every technological leap redraws the battle lines. How will war be waged in the decades to come? See what lies ahead in the limited series, Future Warfare. And uncover the influence of European cities on the greatest musical compositions ever written in the captivating series, Classical Destinations. It's all on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Spend less time in the laundry room and more time doing the things you love. Introducing the Samsung Smart Top Load Laundry Pair, now available at Lowe's. The washer's large capacity means you can fit more in every load. Plus, its super speed setting washes a full load in only 28 minutes. Shop the smart washer that will streamline laundry day, backed by Lowe's Price Promise. Based on using super speed on a normal cycle with an 8-pound low, terms apply. See Lowe's.com slash price promise for details. U.S. only. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Well, today seems to be a day of where you're getting stuff you may not really want. We gave, oh. yeah, we gave you the Mariah Metallica Christmas mashup. But we, yes. We gave it to you, but we didn't know if you really wanted it. And now, this is coming out. There's news that one of the biggest bands of the early 2000s is considering getting back together. Samba Wamba, finally. That would be amazing. Wow. I, I, you know what, down. Danny? I you're up again. again. Yeah. The original yeah. lineup of th- Third Eye Blind. Um, I actually like Third Eye Blind, so I wouldn't mind. Same here. Yeah. Um, God, graduate. Um, no, we're talking about Creed, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, come on, 2020. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like you want to get kicked in the dingling more, 2020? Yeah. Yeah. Here's Creed. Yeah, Scott Phillips, the, the Creed drummer, says, yep, there is a chance that we're all going to reunite. Yes, with Scott Stapp. And here is uh, Scott Phillips talking about it. There has been some chatter. There's no specific timetable for anything or no specific plans, but it's uh, it's a possibility down the down the road. We'll, we'll just kind of let it play out naturally and see what happens. He sounds just as excited as the rest of us. Yeah, he does. <laughs> sure does. I'm only I look, dude. I, everyone wants a goof on Creed, but everyone seemed to own the damn record. They didn't sell. Right. 
10 million copies of their albums to just one Creed fan that bought it 10 million times. Well, that one Creed fan, though, he's pretty he's pretty obsessed. But, yeah, because the rest of the, like you said, they, they, they would all reunite with Scott Sapp because the three other members of Creed are still doing stuff. They're called Alter Bridge with That's Miles right. Kennedy singing. Yeah, and they're right. awesome. I love Alter Bridge. I've always liked Alter Bridge more than Creed, but I was never a big Scott Sapp guy. Oh, he's doing his own thing. You're not big, you're not following his stuff. You're not doing, uh. Yeah, I mean, he's fine. I'm not like going to, I mean, the guy's had some issues and it sounds like he's turned his life around and he's doing better and that's cool. Yeah, Scott Phillips says that he, that Sapp is doing pretty well. Dude, uh, I, still one of my favorite things ever was when Creed was becoming like the big monster band that they were. And in an inadvertent way, the show that I was on, we helped get a member of Creed get kicked out of their band. What? It's still one of my favorite things. We It got covered by MTV. It was just a, such a surreal thing. We interviewed Brian Marshall, the bassist of Creed. Yeah. And it was at the height of them being Creed. And I remember we asked them about, hey, you know, the comparisons between Scott and Eddie Vedder. And... I even found it like the I didn't find the actual audio, but I found some like MTV news in the quote of it. And he said, Eddie Vedder wishes he could write songs like Scott Stapp. I love Pearl Jam, but I just don't don't understand the route that they took. And I don't think it had, and I don't think it all had to do with Eddie Vedder. So he's basically saying, you know, the band was, you know, that Eddie wasn't wow. as great as that people were making it out to be. That's a that's a shot fired. That became like a big news story in the world of music. And sure. then soon after that, they kicked him out of the band. <laughs> Oh, so they uh, even though he was complimentary in a way, as, as you know, to, well, he to, was he was showing love for his bandmate, yeah. but because he took the shot because it backfired bad on him, yeah. You know? And then I come to find out many many years later that he was like on a boat doing the interview and he was really tired and he didn't even realize that it was like. Like he just wasn't thinking that he was in. He didn't know that he was doing an interview in Seattle, and I think that's what really hurt him. Oh, I just yeah. thought that was funny. I mean, obviously they've gotten along just fine since then, and he's back with the band, and now he can be back with Creed. Yeah, you got to be careful uh, the sacred cows and who you really and who you tread over. That's uh, yeah, that's a beating. I like the sexer. Piss off. Creed was my favorite in high school. Okay, <laughs> people love Creed. All right. I mean, look, there's there are there's, there are things that you love in life, though. People are always going to give you a hard time for it. It doesn't, you know. Another person says, can't lie. Definitely got down with Creed back in the day. All right. Well, look at you guys. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you're going to be excited. On. It could happen. Oh, fingers crossed. <laughs> it's the lukewarm topic of the day. Steve's got his fingers crossed. There's a chance that the band Creed may get back together with Scott Stapp. And based on this, we want you to fill in this sentence. I know, I know. It's not cool to say that I'm a fan of blank, but I am. What is something that you love that people goof on you for being a fan of? 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. What is something that you love that people goof on you for being a fan of? You call some texts after Candlebox on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There is a chance that the band Creed is going to get back together, yes, with Scott Stapp. So based on this, we wanted to fill in this sentence. I know it's not cool to say that I'm a fan of blank, but I am. What is something that you love that people goof on you for being a fan of? 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Matt and Kenmore, you are on the rock. Yeah, uh, Neil, the real deal diamond, man. Yeah. I love that dude. <laughs> uh, and Matt, how old are you, man? Because it, it depends on your age, I think, you know, uh, how bad you get made fun of. Uh, 43. Oh, yeah, that's... We're coming to America. Yeah, I mean, today. it gets a pass, I think, if you're a, a Bostonian because of he's loved, you know, for the seventh inning stretch at Fenway Park. I don't know, man. You go to a Neil... I don't. I haven't been to a Neil Diamond concert, but I've had somebody that go in there just like, it's it's insane. The, the All walks of life are at a Neil Diamond show. Yeah, last time I went, I was front row at a Neil Diamond show because my wife loves Neil Diamond, but she's loved him back in the 70s when he had the flow and the shirt wide open with, with the, the chest, chest hair. Hair. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, we were... We were, we, were, we were there when people basically would, like, at any moment, they would just go right to the sack with him. <laughs> Seriously, they would hit the sack with him. Yeah, they would, man. Straight to the sack. Right oh, we're talking about the bed. The bed, yes. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. All right. And then maybe, I was thinking uh, something else. Well, of course you were. So, uh, so man, you know, I, yeah, Neil Diamond, the guy, the, the guy is a, he's an entertainer, man. Even when he was old and he had the big belly that we saw him, he still was, you know, he was still amazing. Well, and also, like, I mean, that, that, there's that tribute band, Super Diamond, that I remember when I first moved out here, man, they would play, like, the show box, and they would pack that place out all the time. And we're talking about people in their 20s losing their minds nice. to the music of uh, Neil Diamond. 
Diamond, but seeing this cover band, basically. But they did it full up. The, the singer really embraced the spirit of Neil Diamond. And, man, they would always just crush it at the show box. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, it's nice to hear that maybe uh, you're not such a goof for liking a Neil Diamond. And with this person, this is definitely on the list of many things that I get made fun of for loving. But I think the one musically that people always give me a hard time and they always give me a side eye is Limp Biscuit. Person's like, I'm 27, had their first album when they first came out. I'm, I, I will, I, it's not even a guilty pleasure. I love Limp Biscuit. Yeah. I think Limp Biscuit's awesome. I can't wait for the day that they just go on tour. I was so disappointed when they didn't do that White River Amphitheater show with Ice Cube. I love that band. I'm going to listen and, to them and, today. And unapologetic. No, there's no embarrassment. 206-421-ROCK, Texas at 77999. Ian in Puyallup, you are on the rock. Morning, fellas. Morning, Ian. So how about you? What is something you love that people go, come on? Well, so I like Adam Lambert, but because I'm a country boy and I've got a bunch of country friends, they kind of dog on me for liking Adam Lambert. Ah, oh, man, Adam Lambert's awesome. Yep. Now, did you like him before Queen or after Queen? <laughs> I actually have been a fan of him since American Idol. Oh, look at this. That's old you school. both, brother. My Man, wife and I yeah. loved him on American Idol. He was so good. He was great. I mean, a lot of people didn't like his rendition of The Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash, but I actually kind of liked it. I thought it was unique. Then when he did Zeppelin, it was it was out of this world, man. It was great. Yeah, Ian, good for and you. It, good for you, man. It's, it is interesting how we just tribe up sometimes when it comes to people liking things. I think it's getting better in life. But when I was growing up, man, if you didn't like what everybody liked, it was devastating. I don't, if he, I, I don't know if he's watched it yet, but it, I think it's on Netflix, that documentary on Adam Lambert joining Queen. And they do a lot. They talk a lot about his time with American Idol and, and share some stuff that I didn't know. It's a really cool piece. I think it's still on Netflix. It's an Adam Lambert Queen documentary. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. 206-421-ROCK, Texas at 77999. What's something that you love that people goof on you for being a fan of? Let's go to Paul in Bremerton. Paul, you are on The Rock. Greetings, fellow Atoll. Good morning, Yo. Paul. Welcome. What you got for us, buddy? Well, I'm 48 years old. I'm a mechanic, which you all know. I get made fun of because I love to go home, take a hot bubble bath, light some lavender candles, and listen to Mozart. And oh, then awesome. out. Wow, the Mozart. I I don't think people can give you a goof for that. I mean, you know, come on, that's like that's classic highfalutin stuff. The bubble bath Absolutely. and the candles. That's when that's when music was actually music. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but I mean, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, right, <laughs> come yeah, on, BJ. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I look, I I, pre I can appreciate somebody like classical music. It's not my thing usually, but the candles and the lavender. I can see. I would I would be goofing on you for that, just because, especially if you're a manly looking guy doing what you do. Yeah, I would. Oh, she thinks a lot. I would. Oh, I do it. I have to. If I was your buddy you know i'd rip on you for the rest of your life but i can't rip on you for mozart it's definitely hey, you know what yeah. i actually i actually had a co-worker actually go home and tried it and he said he had the best night's sleep that he ever had well oh, yeah, dude you put some classical music on i'm asleep right away <laughs> yeah. oh, <good> call. <laughs> i mean i've been getting i've been getting massage for it's got to be 25 almost 30 years now i yeah. was introduced to it in rochester new york by my buddy wheeze of all people and i've been like what are you talking about and i just figured it was going to be like one of those sketchy places because you know you never know with wheeze bro you gotta go try this out and everything he told me to try out it's like am i gonna get arrested but actually it was a legitimate massage therapist mm -hmm. and it really did wonders for my back which i have a screwed up back ever since i ever since i was born and attacked by that snowman and that's no <laughs> yeah the snowman um and but i remember people just giving me such a hard time like you go to a massage you get your body massaged it's definitely become a lot more mainstream than it was but i've been doing it for three decades and i think nowadays when it comes to like self-care and i'm i'm guilty of making fun of people and being like i'm never going to do that but it, i think nowadays it's all about the, the manicure and pedicure like when you hear a guy oh, going yeah. to do that oh, it's like yeah. probably how it was when you used to go get a massage it's like oh what are you doing but like you know my wife's been trying to get me to do that i'm like no never i like my fingers and toes the way they are it's awesome dude it's so great i mean See? that's what i mean here's it's, why it's awesome but you probably get goofed about it oh yeah you yeah. get uh, most of the time you guys go together uh, is that what you guys are doing your man's weekend? I wish. I wish we did that. I'm with Danny. Dude, <laughs> is it sure for Manny Petty weekend? And I, oh, all the time I thought it was yeah, Manny Yeah, it's a Manny weekend? Petty's weekend. Yeah, nice. Dude, you get, uh, usually you get a very attractive person just basically taking care of your hands and your feet. It's a wonderful thing. Nice. What's his name? 
Hey, <laughs> it's the comedy. Yeah, if you go to the right place, they'll give you a glass of champagne or wine. It's really? fancy. Mm-hmm. What about Perfect. a shot of Fireball? <laughs> I mean, there's other places that probably do that, too. I know a few. That yeah. would be awesome. I lit during your Manny well, Pena. Yeah. Never, they've never offered me a bar, some booze. You, got, you, got, you guys are going to the good joint. Oh, yeah. Man, I mean, Danny, that's, I mean, if they give us the, the, I don't want wine, but if they give me, like, you know, rum and diet, I'm in. All right. Let's do it. What about some White Claw? Uh, yes, uh, there the you go. Eh, that's Sarah's thing, kind of, sort of. I mean, it's not really. Oh, so you can't. Okay, truly, is that hers too? No, I mean, see, actually, Sarah, I don't think Sarah likes the seltzers. That's more of me and Joe's thing. Yeah, you're right. That is. Well, she actually makes fun of me and Joe. I was about to it. say, I feel like that's something that people get goofed on, and it's like, have you tried them? They're awesome. They're so amazing. Right. Yeah, I mean, look, they taste just like a seltzer, except, of course, you're going to get destroyed, which is great if you have too many of them. You yes. toss a little vodka in there, forget about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't hate the I don't hate the seltzers. I'll take it if they give it to me, but, you know, if you're going to let me have a choice. It's like umbrella drinks. I feel like, I'm sorry, they're good. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm great. Oh, you can't, of course I'm they not, are. I'm not going to spend, like, an entire night drinking them, because that's just, that's just way too much sugar. Yes. And but if too I'm much on of a, a hangover. Yeah, that too. But on, on a vacation, like, you better give me an umbrella drink. I want a pina colada. Well, exactly. Especially Ooh. if you're in the locale. Yeah, get that Mai Tai. Yeah. Like, if you're in Hawaii, you have to get a Mai Tai. Look, hot take, but Mai Tais are trash. Go oh. home. Whoa. Did that just get said on our show? They're not fruity enough, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but it's got, it's got rum. Not. What else do you want? It's got I rum know. in there. I mean, rum is all you need. I mean, sure, throw whatever else fruit in there, but as long as they got the rum in there, brother. <laughs> I was all excited at first when I tried a Mai Tai in Hawaii. I'm like, this is going to be amazing. I'm like, oh, man, I kind of regret not getting a pina colada. Oh, well, listen, you can't go wrong with that either. I would say you do Mai Tai and Pita Colada, whichever one you like. I like this guy says I'm a six foot, uh, 320 pound strongman competitor, and I love Whitney Houston. My friends always give me a hard time from Jen and Marysville. Nice. Yeah. Nice. See, my son is in the room. Uh oh. I wonder what people are giving him a hard time. Joey D. Probably because he's nuts. not as awesome as his dad. Maybe I give him a hard time because of your father. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. no, now, no. looking around the room, I have a feeling you guys are going to make fun of me when I say this, but uh, every time I tell people I'm a Patriots fan, dude, I never hear the end of it. We got a few texters that have also brought that up. I'm a Patriots fan in Seattle. It sucks. Dude, it's so weird. I mean, you know, from Deflate Gate, you know, do I like deflated balls every time I talk about oh. it? Or do I like cameras? Do I like being spied on? You know, it's the weirdest thing, though, because for me, I've never been a part of an uh, like a NFL like fanboy love of a team and then actually get to watch as the city I'm living in goes to the Super Bowl against them. That's never been something that happened. So getting to watch the Super Bowl with all my friends when both of us were cheering for each team was awesome. Until the end. Well, and all your Seahawks friends probably wanted to kill you. Yeah, that yeah, they was did. definitely true. Yeah, they did, including your father. But, yeah, I mean, it's just the weirdest thing because I've never had that hate for other NFL teams like that. So it was fun to actually watch the Hawks fans learn to hate the Patriots and then get to go a little bit. Well, yeah, because, I mean, we were going to, I mean, it was, it, it was you know, obviously going to be an amazing thing. Back to back is what it looked like we were going to have with another ridiculous, amazing comeback in a season that had ridiculous, amazing comebacks with ridiculous catches. I want to say this, though. I do get frustrated. I never once in my life told Joey anything about the Patriots. I was never a Patriots fan in my life. I didn't care about football at all until I moved to basically Rochester, New York, and I had to know about it. I was a sports guy, and I was there when the Bills went to four straight Super Bowls. I have ne- I've never been a Patriots fan. You found this on your own. I don't know how you started loving the Patriots because I was never that guy. Well, I met other Bostonians here for my for my love of the Red Sox, which you did raise me. I did give you that. And See, so, so they, it is your there fault. You There's a gateway drug. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and, and, and so I will still get people to this day going, why are you representing the Hawks? And it's like, because I like the Hawks. It's been 20 years. I don't care about the Patriots. No, no, no. Uh, it's, you know, that, that guy, John and Tequila, he's, he's the be all end all. He says who can be a Seahawks fan and who not. Oh, I forgot about John and Tequila. Yeah. yeah. I it is funny you John said... John the gatekeeper. It is funny you said that, Steve. Have you heard about this with Seattle? Because I told somebody, hey, I've been here about 20 years. And he goes, yeah, and you're still not one of us. Somebody said that to Damn! me. Damn! Yeah. He, I mean, I, I was like, wow, the Seattle freeze is hitting big time. Oh, every I, once on the text line, you'll get somebody that's like, this is the problem with Seattle now. You guys need to go back to where you came from. And it's just like, well, dude, I've been here yeah. since 1997. What do you want? Like, what more can I add to? How, I mean, how long do you, do you need have to beat to be? me into Seattle? Like, is that what it is? Is it a gang that I need to get initiated into? Oh, yeah. Time for the initiation. You guys got to beat me with, like, like, cream cheese hot dogs or something? Like, yes. what's going on here? Yeah, I, 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 I want that. That's yeah. actually a, a naughty dream I've had before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. I'll take a cream, cream cheese hot dog beating. I like this texture. As a native Hawaiian, I agree with Steve. Mai Tais suck. Wow. Well, listen, at least the yeah. native Hawaiian has a point. They get to say what they want. They know. Oh, yeah. They lived it. They're from the streets of Hawaii. <laughs> They're from it. They're from it. 
All right. Uh, well, here's a question for you. Why are engineers making robot hands that mimic a female hand for men to buy? Now, this doesn't sound creepy at all. <laughs> I'll tell you why. It's 747 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's another question from a listener. I have a mountain of credit card bills and consumer debt. Can I still keep my house if I file bankruptcy? Yes, you almost always can keep your home and, and your house, your car in a, in a bankruptcy. Depending on what type of bankruptcy you file uh, would depend on whether or not, for example, you can keep your vehicles if you have payments on them still. You can almost always keep your home if you're current on the payments on your home, even in full bankruptcy. In Chapter 13, uh, you can also keep those items. If you're behind on your house, you could catch your house payments up in a Chapter 13, take off a second mortgage in a Chapter 13. So keeping your, your primary assets like a home and car is almost always possible in bankruptcy. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. And thanks for listening. New on Curiosity Stream. Nobody said parenting was easy. A psychologist observes real caught on tape family moments and helps parents apply simple rules for happier homes on kids and instruction manual. And one of the most well known images in art history, the scream, has been stolen numerous times and it's not alone. Join the hunt for history's missing masterpieces on Raiders of the Lost Art. It's all on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com.